I mean, I love ARs, and this is kind of how we used to set them up, but we can make this gun shoot better and look great. Today on BuildBox, we're taking this ugly duckling and making it into a swan. That is definitely not how you use that. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, What's up? For the next one? Uh, we are ready and uh, waiting to see what you got. So I got lots of good stuff in here, lots of cool parts. The cool thing about doing gun builds, we always say you can customize it, you can make it what you want it to be, but you can also upgrade an existing gun. I'm I'm taking stock. Yeah. You are. Definitely missing a couple of things that I noticed. Looks like you got some missing parts. He, he's prepared. You know what? For it. You're right. I'll be right back. All right. So what do we got? Dude, he's missing. He's missing a lower. So AR stuff. Missing a lower. There's no receiver sets. No. <laughs> We're building a duck gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ugly duckling. Oh god. Look at this <laughs> classic. That's one way to make an entrance. That is the biggest Ooh. duck call I've ever seen, and the ugliest. I mean, where'd you get this, uh, 1996? Yeah, it was 2004. It was back when I was in the sandbox. I was never in the sandbox. Really? Um, this is classic, right? Quad rail. Um, I the mean, classic it's just, cheese grater. It's, I know. Yeah. Hand this grater. is the type of gun that a lot of people bought. They've got in their safe, they've got it in their house and they want to upgrade it, but they don't have to leave it like that. So we have a bunch of cool stuff here. You guys get started. All right? This okay. is interesting. Dude, I know this gun. Is that Shane's gun? Yes. This was in a class at Range Ready. You know what? The and I thought he needed to upgrade it back then. And I, I was like, what you, I literally could not move. <laughs> Can't move the safety. Look at this. That's a problem. Uh. That's yeah, a problem. Yeah, fixed front to... sight's got to come off. We got to. So what's he got to do? Cannot that? even work the safety on that. Guy. That's a bad deal. So we've got 18-inch ballistic, right? Yep. 223. Two, thank God it's the right caliber. ATN X Sight 5. That's a day night scope. So day perfect night for the farm. Laser range finder on this. Yep. So you said it's something about the safety. Oh, for, brand new. So that's great. I'm glad he's, to see that. We're gonna take that A2 off and we're gonna put a uh, primary weapon system Evolve in it. And that's the FSC 556. Also, bolt carrier group, but lightweight bolt carrier group? Oh, I mean, we could do that. Uh, okay, I see what he's got. He's got another titanium nitride in here too. Probably a better choice for yeah. Shane because obviously he doesn't know how to take care of a rifle. Nope, all right. Uh, new charging handle. Cool, because this oh, yeah. one's a little antiquated and this is Ambi. All right, that's awesome. So that, we've got everything laid out here. First thing to do is start breaking it down. That's what we've got to do. The original design for the AR-15 was designed around a 20-inch barrel to really get the most out of that 223556 cartridge. But you have a lot of options when you're doing your build. 20-inch, 18-inch, 16-inch, 12-inch, there's probably other ones in between there, right? Generally, the longer barrel is going to give you better ballistics, certainly more velocity, and depending if you're gonna do some hunting and you don't care about the weight of the gun and the length of the gun, you're gonna be getting more from that round. But if you want something really short, easy to handle, you may go with a shorter barrel. A little bit less velocity, but maybe that doesn't matter. These are all things to consider when you're trying to decide on the right barrel length for your build. Kevin, this trigger is consistently inconsistent. Dude, I'm, I'm moving the whole table over here. What the heck are you doing? I'm trying to mess with this thing. I cannot get it. Let me get... pull on it once. 
You're kidding me. <sighs> Dude, I can't, I can't get it. You're kidding me. It's a problem. All right, we get it in the teeth. <sighs> Build Box, brought to you by Ballistic Advantage. Gun Talk TV. And Luth AR. Dude, I don't, what, it, what causes that? What would cause something like this? It's gotta be a factory assembled upper and they just put it together with air tools or something. You need a bigger tool. I need, I need something a lot bigger than me. You need something a lot bigger. Wow, what do you guys? Oh, what do you guys got going big. on here? Dude, I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna let you take over. Box, thank you for joining us, dude. Ryan, oh, tell you're me gonna you're... let me do this? Oh yeah, I told you I need something bigger. You're, that, you are a true friend. Yeah, huge. mil spec barrel nut, dude. I am literally bleeding for this. Oh man, if Box These... can't get it, no one can. What are you doing? We're gonna switch out to a action rod that's going to put less pressure on the upper okay. in hopes that we can salvage this upper right there so this thing actually will lock into our so barrel extension do you think that do you think the upper is damaged because of what we're dealing with now not necessarily i've i've pulled uh disassembled these mil spec um uppers a lot it's pretty common for them to be way over torqued because they have to time so it from the factory from the factory okay um the challenge is going to be uh you had the right wrench um, i had one thing but right, you need thanks. you need a little more leverage okay so, so you that's where bar? yeah basically <laughs> we'll we'll take our torque wrench this goes to 150 foot pounds yeah um box you should just feel this grip screw on here even this I, I'm. Like, we're struggling. We are struggling through this thing. This it it looks. It looks like it's had a really rough life. Do you need me to jump on it? Well, actually, I will be willing to do that. We're gonna hold pressure against that. Did and you just that, break it? Uh, that was the vice. It rolled in. The, the whole vice is rolling in. Now. Yeah, man. Uh, not good news. You can see how yeah. the vice actually, the jaws won't hold right. the rod. So, um, we'll try it again. I really want to keep this, but if, if this is ruined, like there's nothing we can do for this. There's literally nothing we can do for this okay. except replace the upper. That might be what we have to do. That is as tight as I can physically get that vice. I have to figure that those threads doesn't, are stretched. Yeah. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to switch this up. No. It's nope, still, you can see it just rolling in right. the vice. Alright. I luckily for you I got a fix. We'll just replace it with another upper. This one is toast. Well I didn't find anything wrong with the safety selector inside other than something's got to be out of spec the way it's milled. Yeah. I mean, the detent looks fine. It looks pretty Everything gritty though. <laughs> like it looks like there's... I don't know what was keeping it from moving correctly, but I'm going to pop this trigger out. And luckily I got yep. these cool wheeler tools, which have the half punch. So I can actually remove the bolt catch because I'm going to put that big one on there. We got the uh, oversized. Yeah, we got a yeah. loose over here somewhere on the you. table. All right. Well, we'll get that moving along. We'll replace this upper and we'll be good to go. What a piece of crap. This thing is- Which one, the lower or the upper? <laughs> this thing's a mess. I could hardly get the grip off. The safety selector was- It was so, unbearable. Well, it was so bad when I figured it out is, this is an actual, I mean, tell me if that's not an ejector spring for a bolt. That's a bolt ejector spring. Yeah, it's definitely not, it's, Jeff, definitely not the right spring. 
completely you wrong tension. He just found it and it was like, this will do? Yeah, like, I mean, this was without a parts kit. It sort Dude. of fit in. And what he's done is he, I mean, essentially that's unsafe because you cannot work the safety. No, because not, you're not reliably. Right. So, so I, uh, I need to pop out the trigger yet. Um, I made an adjustment to the magazine catch because okay. it was it was threaded out at least one full rotation too far. Really? So if all you had to do was bump it and it was going to drop the mag, hey, but it makes for fast mag changes. And let me flip this down, box. If you're you got to see this. So what I did was, and I got my flashlight here, is I uh, I turned the the buffer tube in one turn because it barely had contact with the buffer retaining yeah, detent. Yeah, and just a little twist and. And uh, it's so out of spec that I had to put a little cut in there, so now I have a really nice... So you filing that down? Yeah, I filed okay. a little U-notch in there, yeah. so that sits really nice. Cool. So I'm going to put in a 45-degree throw, drop in a trigger, and the last thing here is what I'm working on right now is I already knocked this pin out halfway so that I can take out the bolt catch without losing the spring and the detent in there, and I can pop this one back in. I'll slave it from this side and I'll knock that pin back in. Nice oversized yeah. bolt catch. And so lastly, what we've got on the upper is we're gonna do the flash hider at the end and now bolt carrier group. We've got three here. There's something wrong with this one. Can you yeah. figure it out? Uh, so yeah, this this whole thing has been What's a, wrong? a pile and, and never and, never knowing this guy, yeah. you guys know him, I, I've never met him. I've, I've met his rifle now. Um, and and it's there's good. Look at that. No surprise. Oh. No no pressure there. And that's the standard mass we're thinking about putting in, and it doesn't it, move. That's ridiculous. On contact. And there's so, got to be something with the, with this the gun, bolt or the the gas rings or yeah. something in that, if they're even there. Uh, they're probably not. After seeing the ejector spring. Hey, look here. Half half of one of the gas rings is broken out. You can actually see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it out. Oh yeah. So will that have a way in the way this func rifle actually functions? It definitely decreases reliability. It, it may have still been running just because it was a carbine okay. uh, system that at full gas. Oh my yeah, God. That's, and that's how worn, it's worn. Wafer it's thin. Wafer thin. Wafer yeah. thin? <laughs> it's wafer thin. I, mean, I, mean, I did not realize it was German. It's worn <laughs> so far through yeah, that it actually gas broke. Yeah, yeah. right by it. Can't I mean, stop. that's... Yeah. If but that was gonna, a car engine, be smoking like yeah, like terrible. So for reliability, we want to go with standard mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have gone with the fixed gas block, yep. not an adjustable. We're gonna go standard mass. We're gonna stay away from a low mass bulk air group. Just this guy needs a ranch rifle. Obviously, maintenance and stuff no. isn't top priority. No. Um, but we want it to be as reliable as possible. Right. The other cool thing on this, a titanium nitride finish, he'll be able to wipe that carbon wipe it, off. And it'll be... And it'll, yeah, and that'll that'll be way more right. uh, durable than the phosphated okay. mil spec. Are you ever going to finish that down there? Because I'm kind of hungry and we're getting close to finished. This is the last piece. Stock is on, lower is done. The only thing left original on this gun is the lower uh, receiver. Yeah, we got, we saved our pivot and detail. Congratulations, take down you, pins. you saved two, three pieces. Take down <laughs> pins. All right, last but not least, the comp. Last yeah. thing, and timing it, I never can get it right. Like, it's always a little bit off for me. Yeah, a muzzle brake's always gonna have to be timed or else it's gonna well, not work. There's, a, there's one thing. So how does how does the crush washer go on? It should go cone. Really? I've been doing it backwards Why? my whole life. I've well, been putting it on the other way. Who told you that? I swear to God I have. Yeah, you can see it goes nice and flush. You wanna know why? Because you never read directions. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Alright, so this is the PW PWS. PWS. Primary PWS. weapon system. And it's the which one is it? It's the SC556. This is the same one they put on the SCAR. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Well, it holds the gun level, it holds the gun, like there's no recoil. It keeps that gun flat. Yeah, it's just a really good looking count. So, so let's, go ahead, let's hurry up get it on there. We're almost All right. We've got a minute and a half. That's, a, that's as long as you're giving him to time this out. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a lot of time. <laughs> to get it right, take your time. Note to so, self. I'll start with just the armor's wrench. So, 
that looks like top right there. Nope, that's bottom. See, so you have your okay, pen. You gotta, you gotta, I can't see. Put your, put your cheaters on. Mm. All right, so we're going all the way around, and you all just keep going. Around. Well, I mean, until it. Yeah. Wow. And then. Is it good? Keep going. Little keep bit, going. Something like. Keep going. Keep going. Oh my gosh. A little Chris more. Is notorious for just a little bit more. Man, that's perfect. Beautiful. Hey, next is optic. You want to skip a hand? Uh, nope. That's on you guys. So good luck. It's been fun. Wow. Thanks, big All box. Right. <laughs> that's normally the hardest thing we have to do is put an optic on. The scope rings and scope bases that you choose are almost important as the scope because it's really the foundation for mounting your scope and being accurate and being consistent when you sight it in. So you have options there. Cantilever mount like this one from Wheeler is a one piece, pretty simple, typically used on AR-15s to help you get a little bit more eye relief for the scope. Or you could go with scope rings. They have the rail attachment at the bottom. It's a two piece because you have a little bit more flexibility on how you mount that more traditional setup. And then we're talking about height of your rings and your bases and how do you choose? Well, in general, you want them kind of as low as possible, but it depends on the shooter and your makeup and what you're comfortable with. That's gonna be determined on the objective lens, which is the lens facing your target and how big that is. You see those big scopes, you know, you're probably gonna need some higher rings so the scope isn't touching or resting on the handguard or the rifle. So just a couple options for you and a couple tips on scope rings and bases. Build Box, brought to you by Timney Triggers. Range Ready. And Aero Precision. All right, let me see what you're working with here. I'm gonna do my best Sereno impression here. Do I got them on? <laughs> do I got them good? <laughs> Uh-oh. Right, here comes a duck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, what? Hey. Uh, this isn't an ugly duckling anymore, is it? Well, she's 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 getting to swan esque, but this we do awesome. have a pile of parts here. Kind of messed that one up. Kind of just abandoned the whole Man, entire upper, huh? It, this thing <laughs> is pitted. It's corroded. It was this just torqued on there the, way too. It much. was Barrel locked up. Come off. It, it was, was locked up. It was locked up tighter than a duck's butt in cold water. There you go, perfect I mean, tie-in. <laughs> so what did you do to the rifle? What did you put on here? Because it looks so cool. We'll start from the front and work our way back. We've got a uh, primary weapon systems, PWS FSC 556 compensator, ballistic advantage 18 inch barrel. We didn't go yep. 16, didn't go 20, somewhere in between. And looks great. Right? It looks beautiful. Um, and then the handguard arrow precision, now that's 16 and a half inches because we wanted to get. See, and that's yeah. the trend. And we saw this on this old school rifle. I mean, look at the rail. Yeah. That's all you had. Yeah. Was that was the handguard. Now you have a nice long handguard, mm -hmm. which helps you grab the gun, but also mounting an illuminator yeah. for the ATN optic. Yep. He's Love got a it. lot of space up here to play. Real. Uh, <laughs> don't even say it. I don't want you to go there. <laughs> Not again. Um, but oversized uh, bolt release, and then a Radian 45 degree throw. Nice. And we changed out a Luth AR buttstock down here. And what about the trigger Ergo grip? A Timney trigger, Daniel Horner. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell him about the bulk carrier group too? I did not. It's a Luth AR standard mass titanium nitride finish on that. So he doesn't have to worry so much about cleaning it because obviously he doesn't. Yeah. We need a low maintenance gun for this guy. I that's, love the feel, the balance. Awesome. It, that's good. low maintenance. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's a perfect ranch rifle. Cool. You wanna go shoot it? I wanna see how that swan swims. Let's do it.
That shoots soft now. <laughs> now it's working. Now it okay, is. Okay, so let's talk about what just happened here. Well, we had the titanium nitride standard mass in, yeah. and it just wasn't getting enough gas in it, and those rounds were just kind of dribbling out. Yeah. And that man. It's, it's, it's struggling to unlock and cycle. So my experience has been with rifle length barrels, uh, you know, especially custom barrels. Like this is a wild chambered barrel and everything. It is tuned. Not enough gas coming back down the pipe. So we can either drill this out, which is, is not impossible. You right. just gotta make sure you don't go all the way through into the into the rifling on the other side. Oops. Or you can throw a low mass in. Yeah. Now I know you want to shoot this. One Chris. key factor, oh, man, yeah. yeah. It, it shoots wicked soft, and that brake on the front of it really helps. So Ryan, you you seem like you're getting some hits. We're just I, I had to hit a little bit. I had to hold a little bit low. Little bit low. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, how do you like that? I would say that it's it's so. I mean, obviously, I can. You got to get on it, man. Yeah. I can, now, I can run it fast, it, it's so soft. So pay attention to ejection pattern. Right, I'm looking at ejection pattern as Kevin shoots. Oh yeah. The distance, right? It's dropping okay. them off at 3.34 o'clock. What you want. That is a perfect yeah. tune with a low mass system. We don't have an adjustable gas box, so we're solid. The swan's flying, baby. <laughs> Dude, my buddy, he is going to absolutely, he's gonna love it, man. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to guntalk.com, guntalktv.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.